Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. So, I'm with this video, I'm going to start with my placement series and we are coming up with the company Fractal Analytics for our episode 1. So, in this video, we will be covering each and everything regarding the placement part, how the what's the eligibility criteria and how the placement procedure takes place, what all you have to prepare, your resume tips, each and everything will be discussed out and my friend is coming who himself got placed in 2025 batch. So I would suggest you to watch the video till the end so that you don't miss out anything. So without any further delay, let's begin with the video. Okay, so first of all, thank you Sharon for coming to the channel. Uh, hope you are doing well. Yeah, how are you man? I am also good. So, first of all, let's start with the basic intro of yours. Right. So, hi guys. I'm Sharan Veluri. I'm a fourth year engineering student at SRMIST. I'm actually an EC student. I'm Siddharth's classmate as well. Um, so, yeah, pretty much that is what I do academically. Apart from that, I engage in a lot of debating activities. And I also have a lot of fun watching a lot of sports and playing a lot of sports as well. That's amazing to know about you. So, in which company, Sharan, you are placed in? I'm um, Fractal Analytics. Fractal Analytics. So it's basically a consulting firm, right? Um, then yeah, sort of. Consulting is one of the things they offer. More than that, they're an AI-based company that sell their AI services to a lot of Fortune 500 companies. That's amazing. That's amazing. So let's move forward with the eligibility criteria for Fractal. All right. So the eligibility criteria for Fractal was pretty much very basic. It was, I think, 70% across all academics. So that's 70% 10. 12th and 7th CGPA or above for your engineering. So uh, let me tell you one thing guys, ki when you enroll for the placement part, your 10th, 12th and your uh, university CGPA is uh, kept in uh, like uh, consideration. You have to be like up above 60% to get enrolled in your 10th and 12th. So keep that in mind. So moving forward with the next part, how many uh, rounds were there? So um, I think like it was in a way to put it it was three rounds that is you had the resume screening then you had the test and then you had the interviews but the interviews itself were another three rounds okay uh, that's a tedious task yeah that was yes so talking about the first uh, round what it was all about i'm um, so it was basic resume screening there was nothing you could do about it you just have to build a good resume post it to them and then if they like the resume yeah they push you to do the second round. Okay, but so okay. good thing to keep in mind during resume screening is that a lot of companies right now are going for AI screening methods where they, sh you know, they have uh, shortlisted words, and if those words are there on your resume, there's a good chance you get shortlisted. So look for the company that you're applying to, and then customize your resume as per whatever the company does, and ensure that those keywords are there in your resume so that you get shortlisted by it. So guys, keep uh, tuned with the video, pause the complete video as Sharon will be telling about some of the resume tricks also and tips also he will be giving you. So watch the video till the end. So moving to the next part, what was your second round? Um, the second round was the online test round. Online test, okay. So what was it like? How, what type of questions were, what's the time limit? Right. So as far as I remember, to the best of my knowledge, I think it was like a three-hour exam. It was a very long three exam. Three-hour exam. Okay, cool. Yeah, it was around 270-ish questions yeah. where you had like 85 behavioral questions. So these questions technically don't have a right or a wrong answer. <laughs> it's how you respond behaviorally. Is this what best yeah. represents your behavior? But other than that, it's just aptitude, play and aptitude. So how you would pr practice for an any aptitude exam, you prepare the same way as well. And then, yeah, I think pretty much that was the aptitude round. So, do they ask any co coding questions related stuff in your... Um, no. I mean, I think they asked like two questions or one question in the end. But again, coding was like a very small part of those 287 questions. Okay, cool. Keeping that in mind. So, after that, do you have any GD round or directly it was the interview part that came into play? Yeah, so there was no group discussion round. So, what happened was I think around 3000 people wrote the test. And out of which they shortlisted around 40 to 50 people for the interview directly. Okay, cool. So like you told, the interview process was also into divided into three parts, right? Yeah. So what was your first uh, interview round? What, what what it was? The first interview was the plain basic technical interview, where again they pretty much checked up on my resume, see uh, definitely noticed what projects I did, and the moment they saw a couple of software projects because of a couple of courses I had done, 
they start asking me questions about that my involvement in that what kind of an algorithm i used the okay. flow chart was it high level was it low level and all of those questions based on the project they really focus on your resume they hold on to your resume i'm pretty sure they have it on the screen when they're asking you these Correct. questions <laughs> and so it's very essential that your resume has things you definitely know how to like mention how to present Correct. So it was. So you mentioned some of the courses, right? You did courses. So would you like to tell what all courses you did? Also, uh, I was required to do a couple of courses. So I did the deep learning course and the machine learning course by Andrew Ng. Okay. I think pretty much anybody who wants to get into machine learning or AI will follow Andrew Ng. He's been doing some great work with deep learning dot AI. So pretty much that's all the courses I did. And something about the projects. Would you like to highlight any project that was really stand outing or made you do? Make your resume a bit good, right? So, um, so a couple of projects were pretty streamlined, pretty basic. Um, so we used a we a couple of my friends and me created this. Uh, what do you call it? This minor projects. Minor projects, right? Yeah. So we created a couple of these minor projects where, you know, it is like uh, it's like your personal assistant. It's an AI personal assistant, but there's a lot of those. So what we did was we started using voice detection, but using syllables instead of like words, tone, mm-hmm. and all. on how you break syllables down is how we wanted to detect these particular voices That's that was one project we did another we didn't do a project we wrote a research paper about adaptive traffic signs mm-hmm. so basically let's say a particular road is speed limit is 60 kmph but when it starts to rain it's obviously not 60 kmph it has to reduce correct mm-hmm. we wanted to we wrote a paper as to how other environmental factors determine speed limits and how they need to adaptively change to that so amazing project stood like they are really good <laughs> so moving to the next round of interview what it was like first round it was completely resume based so in the second round what all they asked you so the second interview was i think it was taken by a certain manager from within the company the person who took my interview i think he had around like 12 plus years of experience within the company so he was behavioral he wanted to really check as to what your attitude is what your vibe is and everything so he kept asking questions as to situation based questions as to like if you were in this situation what would you do <laughs> and all yeah. that okay so the third round the final it was basically hr or it was again technical part no so the last round was hr the okay. last round was hr we had an hr coming in asking similar questions but her questions so the difference between behavioral and hr is Behavioral, he wants to see if you would take initiative in a particular situation, or if you would lay back, or if you if you understand office etiquette, mm-hmm. professionalism, your work ethic. He wants to get a sense of your work ethic, really. But in the HR round, they're just trying to get a sense of who you are, if you're interested in working in the company, how excited you are, and the kind. They give you a reality check as to how the company is. So the HR round is a good place for you to ask questions like, is there a place to grow? I said like what is the working conditions there what are the work timings in general any questions you have the hr will answer because that's where they want to know if your actual real life doubts as to logistics what are the timings will i get a project how do i grow all of these questions are good questions for you to ask in an hr round amazing so according to you asking questions at the end of the like you get a chance right after every interview they give you anything you want to ask so Were there any questions you asked in the interview round, or only in the HR round you should ask questions? Any oh, so interview tips? Whole and whole, I'm asking for the complete interview tips. Right. So, um, it's pretty simple. I mean, again, I there's always the cliche of, you know, oh, how are the working conditions? Will I get to grow here and all? But I think one question you got, all of you should ask is, see, you not you're supposed to look at this from this point of view. See, obviously they're investing a lot of money in hiring you. But you are also investing your future with them. Correct. So it is your also your duty to understand what your role and responsibilities exactly are, and try and see if you can actually work to them. Okay. If you don't have that initiative, then you will be working a dead end job, and the company will be working with a dead end employee. Correct. So, Sharan, one of the major major thing I want to ask, like we everyone is going through the placement part, right? And we face a lot of rejections. It's not like he. We go and see for the first company we get. Very rare people get that. I'm not saying that, but you also might have gone through this, and you might have also faced the rejections. So how you ta- tackled all those things? What was your mindset to overcome all and again go with a smiling face to another interview? So um, 
if i have to be very brutally honest like there is no uh how do you say it there's no way to actually deal with this rejection i mean obviously you go on youtube when you see beer biceps or somebody telling <laughs> positively like <laughs> positive <laughs> and all of that but like personally the realistic point of view i couldn't deal with rejection i personally had to go to sleep every day thinking about placement wake up every day thinking about placement and all that i, I still remember we both gave zs i and sharan called me up to go down they didn't come <laughs> what the hell they did yeah. i still remember that okay yeah so i i was so heartbroken after zs cuz like it was it was one of the companies i targeted right i didn't go to college for the next two days because i didn't want to answer anybody who was asking me the question what happened with correct. that correct 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 you didn't want to hear the company's name again but see dealing with rejection is difficult but i think uh, i actually recently just saw this uh, i think it's very gen z to say real but i recently saw this real where they say yeah. when you fake motivation or when you fake courage right i think that's just you being courageous like let's say you don't want to do something but you actually fake it and say you know what i'll actually do it that is what is motivation that is how you not procrastinate so i think that's how you go to bed every day saying bro i'll get a placement tomorrow i'll get a placement that's the way yeah. yeah true correct correct so correct the best thing you can do is to stay patient it's very difficult to stay patient but there'll be a, i mean i'm not saying a lot of companies but like there'll be eventually some companies that will come and take you for whatever you want I think you just have to stay patient, and if you don't like, let's say, don't want a company, don't just like go easy on their test. Write their test very meticulously, every exam write properly. Don't say, "Yeah, bro, I don't want this company anymore," and just shut like, up. <laughs> Because I think that's where you lose out on a lot of opportunities. Take every Because time seriously. I think more or less in the first that is the aptitude round. Every companies follow the same pattern question, question pattern basically. So. If you are not interested in another company also, but you get a chance to give the exam, you should at least give your aptitude part good, so that it's a practice kind of thing for the other companies who you are really interested in, right? Yeah, and like so, people. I mean, what I've noticed the trend with this placement season is almost two out of three companies came to campus for a software development intern. Correct. If people who want to do SDE have to really step up their game. I mean, again, I don't know much about SD, but all I know is, you, you, if you're like from a non-computing branch, you'd be competing with the entirety of the computing branch. Correct, correct. And correct. even if you're like really good, there's a good chance they might look at your branch and push you aside. So that's all what we saw, right? Like, the branch preference is one thing that company always focuses on. Exactly. Be it, be it your qualities, they more see on what branch you are, in, because their mindset is. being from a computing branch is easy to teach there or train there or less things uh, work load can be given to them easily because they know particular domain so you need to stand out so here comes the next question about the resume part like how to make a resume stand out so um so again i think people who join srm have this portal called supersec that's where the your entire placement process everything is done on supersec right so okay. suppose that has a resume feature so your formatting won't be an issue like the tables and the columns everything will be formed by themselves okay. but i think it's essential to have descriptions for any internship experiences you have with bullet points and those bullet points can't be i did this we did this mm-hmm. it has to be assertive statements as to like worked on this and stuff okay. like that so that they know exactly what you worked on make it very accurate second of all mention all of the projects you've done and all of the courses that you've done that have helped you do those projects so that they know that your courses and projects are interlinked that you just didn't do them for the sake of adding courses ensure that and be very honest on your resume really and like at least even if you happen to add something that's not really true essentially true at least learn about it so that when they do ask about it you're not caught in a fit right correct 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 because i think resume plays a vital role because it's like you are reflecting yourself in a piece of paper right yeah and apart from that i mean you shouldn't really worry about how long your resume is or like how good your resume is because you're a fresher right so the resume expectations are less but it's essential that you've done like at least like industry related stuff so that <laughs> you're you're obviously more valuable to them if you've done industry related aspects than persons right. who've not done it so any that particular tip that if you would have got it from your senior so it might have changed a little bit more in your interview or placement part right so um if my seniors had told me to stay a little bit more patient i think i wouldn't have had a, such a rocky journey but again yeah i think 
pretty much my seniors have been guiding me throughout have been letting me know as to like you know they'll tell you smile during your interviews use your hands all of that it's so 1990s but the thing is you need to understand and watch videos like this to understand the exact procedure so that you're equipped for every stage right even mentally if you make a note of these stages and understand the eligibility criteria the job description then you're sorted because let's say you mentioned couple of key points of that job description in your interview saying i'm good at this Correct. you know they'll, they'll notice that they'll notice that you've actually gone through it made mental note and you're working towards it so always be very honest in an interview smile as much as possible um don't force a smile i mean genuinely try and be funny in that interview you know try to play it off and try to have a conversation with the interviewer obviously when the technical aspect comes talk to them actually best thing during coding interviews talk to them as you program Correct. Time for you to connect to them as you're programming. Tell them that you intend to do this, that you intend to do that. This block of code is for that. This is why I'm thinking like this. The moment they understand that, at least you're thinking in the right manner, right? They don't Correct. care about your code anymore. They know that okay, he has an idea, he has a structure. I think if you can teach him just how to write a language, he has the knowledge to learn that language. So that's how I've heard coding interviews go well. So with this, I would like to. I think we have covered everything regarding the placement part, how the procedure, and Sharan did a very well job by explaining each and every step in a very detailed manner. And one more thing, I would like to tell about Sharan. He is an amazing speaker. Like from day one, when we were brought offline, I have seen him speaking in our class whenever uh, presentation and stuff. So I will be giving his uh, LinkedIn and Instagram part. you can surely connect with him you can get insights of how the debating part culture goes in he is a amian speaker also he goes and judge also in many amian sessions so you can directly connect with him and you can also get uh, career guidance from him like how he prepared and other stuff so with this i would like to end the video i think regarding fractal each and everything is being discussed out yeah. once again thank you sharan for coming in the channel and briefing out everything about the placement part thanks to that